half dozen of my fights become very tough uh, they're very capable and um, what can I say they all come out with that with a similar style and yeah, a very nice and in control lightweight champion of the world but he leaves that demeanor outside the ring there he is Sugarfoot Cunningham as he gets set to battle Japanese champion Asuka Nobuya and Benny I know you fought that young man in the Tokyo Dome just last April he is a tough customer he sure is. Matter of fact, he went the distance with me and he took a lot of punishment. Here we go. Super lightweights, 11 rounds for the super lightweight championship of the world. The challenger in the blue corner from Tokyo, Japan, with a record of 20 wins, two losses, 16 big wins by knockout, the super lightweight champion of Japan, Atsuka Nobuya. In the red corner, the champion from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, undefeated in 40 professional bouts, 20 wins by knockout, five-time world champion, Peter Sugarfoot Cunningham. Third man in the ring, Mr. Cecil Peoples. This world championship fight will be fought under international rules, Blinky, and they are far different from what we see here in the United States when it comes to kickboxing. Yeah, when you say international rules, you're talking about a kick to the calf, thigh, body, and head. As, therefore, there's a lot more uh, areas to be able to try to attack. But as Blinky was saying, you know, as uh, international rules, but in this year, you'll see no knees, you'll see no elbows. Okay, that's pretty much tie rules. And one other thing worth noting is there are no minimum number of kicks that a kickboxer must employ in each and every round, like the old PKA or ISKA rules, where I believe you had to have eight kicks around, didn't you? Exactly. The problem there is you got a fighter that's out there trying to, he's in the heat of a battle, and he's trying to keep track of how many kicks. That's an old rule that was used to make fighters kick, but the sport has matured, and the fighters are out there kicking and taking care of business. As you see Cunningham come right out, two kicks, right off the bat. I always related that kind of like the Magic Johnson has to dribble 15 times before he shoots, Phil. Yeah. <laughs> good, good analogy, Blanky. Great analogy. Pete there is working to his legs and does a beautiful round kick. You know, so Pete has, you know, Pete has some great maneuver with his legs. He's a good kicker with either leg. You know, and uh, right now he's got good setup. He's going low. You can see he keeps on setting low, so. Uh, he can uh, actually see it. He comes low again, and good combinations. Good hands. Uh, definitely has a lot of speed, as well as not only in his feet, but in his hands as well. Coming to the end now of round one. This World Lightweight Championship fight scheduled for 11 rounds. Rather strange number for a fight, 11 rounds. Yeah, that's one of the old bylaws from the kick sanctioning body which this will be the last event that uh, the fights will go 11. From here on in, there will be scheduled for 12 rounds, World Championship bouts. Ah, beautiful kicks. As you can see, the champion there has beautiful spinning wheel kicks, crescent kick, ass kick. He's known for those type of kicking. Naboya unable to do anything. There he tries to sweep the legs out from under the champ, and Cunningham simply jumps over him. You gotta remember those kicks down low to the legs what they do they're like a body shot you can't see the inc instant results of the damage that they're doing but through the course of a night believe me your legs by the next day will be blown up like balloons oh yeah that's for sure as you can see the champion he keeps on going low and he's setting them up and then he comes high with it there's actual defense for them low kicks you'll notice that either of the two fighters will pick up their knee to catch the uh opponent's kick to the leg. Now some 2,200 in attendance tonight, including that man right there, David Lee Roth. Quite a kickboxing aficionado. Well, you know, actually, uh, David Lee Roth also is a kickboxer. I've, you know, I've trained him for, for quite some time. It was a left kick to the body. Good opening round for the champion. We'll be right back. Rock and roll. Fast. Fun. Furious, the pulse. It's everything about life that has anything to do with being young, and crazy, and wild. Fun. You're like KNAC.
Legacy. We rock harder and better. Everybody, listen carefully. The Martians are coming this way. We must evacuate the city. Mars. Red Rover, Red Rover, send David right over. The new music invasion on Earth comes from Mars FM. Mars FM, 103.1. Do you know what... Back to the Hollywood Palladium, it is round two of the Super Lightweight World Championship. Peter Cunningham, the champion, is on the left. And the Japanese champion, Asuka Nabui, on the right. And Cunningham comes right out and backs his Japanese opponent up. Cunningham ain't wasting no time. He's coming out to defend that world title. He heard Nabui was coming in to take it from him, and he's going right for it. No knockdown, a slip on the part of Nabui. As you can see, uh, Sugarfoot here, he's, you know, he has such uh, great feet work, just like his hands. They, they both work together. It's almost like using that foot like a jab. A lot of times you'll notice a Cunningham, what he'll do is he'll look down like a knife thing, like he's going to go to the legs, and he'll come right up on top of the legs. And Booyah trying to work down low just right now with the right leg. Yes, he definitely does have some good counter, good counter kicks and good uh, left-hand counter there. Benny, do fighters have a dominant leg, or are you naturally better with your left leg or your right leg? No, well, actually... Uh, some fighters are just uh, using the front leg because it's closest to your opponent. But as you can see, the champion Petey, he's using either leg and either hand. He can use them uh, any way he wants. But most most fighters will uh, use that front leg, you know, as their um, as their setup. There you go again. As you can see, uh, defense uh, thigh kick there. As you can see, if, as he picks up, the boy picks up his front leg, he's vulnerable to be swept from his back leg. And uh, that's what, uh, when I was fighting, that's what I was looking at at that time. Cunningham trying to get inside in round one. He pretty much fought from the outside, moving left, right, right to left. And here in round two, he's pretty much trying to come right at the boy now. But yes, he's definitely more, more aggressive. Uh, he's coming out in each, uh, this round here, much aggressive. For two rounds, Asuka Naboya, the Japanese lightweight champion, has had problems with the speed and uh, agility of Pete Cunningham. Yes, he has, Phil. I don't, I don't think that Naboya expected this kind of speed. You know, it always looks slower, or how should I say, you always think you can do better when you're looking at a fighter. He's seen Cunningham fight, and I don't think he realized how fast he really was until these kicks and punches started coming at him. You know, Benny, when you fought uh, Naboya over at the Tokyo Dome in April, 54,000 fans on Naboya's home turf, you were fighting an uphill battle, my friend. Uh, I was, but uh, I just have the experience over yeah. most of them, or most of the fighters, and that's what... Uh, they come in facing my experience. Notice that's a very fast left leg of Peter Cunningham. Now he's coming back with the right leg. He's using the left leg to set up the right leg to go up to the head with. Where's that left leg again? The Booyah, I don't know if it's the canvas or what, but I think that's the second time that he's uh, slipped down. Right? Yes, it is. No knockdown. Normally, the trademark of the Oriental and the Southeast Asian kickboxers is their tremendous speed. But here in this fight tonight, uh, Benny, it is the speed of Peter Cunningham certainly offsetting what any quickness Naboya might exhibit. See, what well, most, most of the Orients, uh, they fight, they, they're, they're taught to fight inching in, coming always forward. And as you can see, this is the opposite. Uh, uh, Petey Cunningham here just seems to keep him going backwards. He just, he has him all confused. He, I, I don't think uh, he knows how to handle this. I tell you, all of those at ringside, Blinky, have to be able to, to see what we're seeing, and that is uh, Osuka Naboy seems awfully tentative. 
He sure does, and I, I really believe that Cunningham is surprised because Nobuya, having gone the route with Benny the Jet and several other top fighters, never been on the deck, but nevertheless, he usually comes out with a little more aggression than what he's putting on tonight. I don't know if he's just having an off night or if Cunningham is just right on his game. Well, Nick, I, ju I, actually, I just think he's confused. He's, he's confused with the speed and uh, the lateral movement uh, and, and the speed of his front leg. I think he's just confusing and not sure what to do about it. As you know, as we fought many times earlier, they're, they're not used for so many different types of combinations. Three rounds in the books, eight to go from the Palladium. That's the champion, the lightweight champion of the world, Peter Sugarfoot Cunningham. Boy, I'll tell you. He has had it his way through three. Yes, he has, but I think you hear his corner man, Ruben Yukidis, out there exhorting him that, that the Japanese challenger is not going to come to him, so he's going to have to go ahead and take it to him and just go ahead and get him on out of there. He's exhorting him to just go ahead and get him on out of there. Cunningham, originally from Edmonton, now nice fights out of Van Nuys, California, and a good kick here to open round four. What he's starting to do, Phil, is double up on that left leg, and he's caught him a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> Cunningham he's showboating a la almost a Sugar Ray Leonard sort of a yeah. look into the camera there. Well, Petey there definitely has a good sense of humor, but he's, mm -hmm. as you see, he's a very uh, serious fighter. Quick left jab starting to work now for Cunningham. Boy, how far the sport of kickboxing has come since the early 70s when the sport was uh, really introduced into the United States. And now, some 15, 16 years later, not only are Americans able to compete against their Asian counterparts, but they're beginning now to walk off with a marked degree of success. I think we're just starting to really understand the conditioning, the training, you know, and putting actually the hands and feet together. Uh, we finally figured it out after 15 years later. Cunningham, the world champion on the right. That is Osuka Naboy, the Japanese lightweight champion on the left. Where's that doubling up on that left leg again, Phil? I'm surprised Cunningham's not going to come back with the right leg because it seems to me that he's trying to set that up. Boy, the boy really unable to get off on anything thus far in this fight. His leg kicks are slow. He has yet to throw one combination that has meant anything. Little more than a wind in the face of Pete Cunningham. Without a doubt, the champion's been in control of the first four rounds. Hey, Polly, what's up? Hey, Brian. What do you say we catch a movie and a pizza? You know, I would, but I have a date. Paul, you got to tell me, how do you meet all these terrific chicks? I found the great dateline. Just dial 1-900-835-4001, and you can listen to tons of pretty ladies from all over. It's really the coolest way to meet exciting people with the same interests. Paul, that number! 1-900-835-4001. Write it down. Everybody, listen carefully. The Martians are coming this way. We must evacuate the city. The new music invasion on Earth, Mars FM. Mars FM, 103.1. Scored thus far. Well, unofficially, I have the champion winning all first four rounds. Not only is he aggressor, but he has just landed the most uh, kicks and punches. Benny, without, how about you? Uh, without a doubt, uh, uh, Petey there uh, is definitely out uh, kick punched. I give, uh, I have it all four rounds for the champion there, Petey. Cunningham in the white. He tries to sweep the legs out from under Naboya. 
And here he comes out, starting the pace of the round again. He doesn't seem to be wasting no time jumping on Asuka. Neither fighter wearing the, uh, the plastic or the rubber foot protectors that we have seen in the old PKA or ISKA days. Are, are those optional here in the well, kick sanctioning group? Well, when you have an international uh, rules, it is an optional. It's a choice of the fighters. In this case, both fighters agreed not to wear any protection on their feet except ankle supporters. Again, Cunningham on the move here in round five. Petey there seems to be uh, coming on real aggressive. He was, he's been aggressive from round one and on, but as you can see in this round, he seems to really be picking up the pace and zero, zeroing in on his uh, targets there. You see, he's not missing too many times here. Right there, he threw a left roundhouse kick, did miss, and came back with a counter side kick to the body, doubling up once again with that front leg. You know, I, I don't know exactly what's on Asuka's mind, except that uh, he's been taking a tremendous thrashing throughout the bout and doesn't seem to be able to come back with any answer to uh, any of the questions that Petey's asking him. Well, it's not like Cunningham is giving him any time to answer any of those questions either. It's, Asuka has had his back to the wall, literally, since the opening bell of round one. We have five in the books, six still yet to come. And, there is the world lightweight champion, Peter Cunningham, and he has been impressive. Yes, he right. has. Right leg to the body, then he comes back with a left hook, right hand right over the top. Uh, I'll tell you, Asuka takes a good shot, and then comes right back with the right leg to the back of the ear. Well, that's what impressed me when I fought him. He, he definitely could take a lot of punishment, because uh, I definitely gave him a lot of punishment then. And as you can see, he, uh, you know, the champion here is just giving it to him, and he's taking every bit of it. It's kind of like you're starting to wonder, well, is he saving it towards the end of the fight? Is he waiting to come on towards the end, hope, hoping that the champion will burn himself out? I don't think he should wait too much longer, because uh, uh, the champion there just seems to be pouring it on. Oh, now he's coming on. Nice body shot. Great body shot by Cunningham. One of the few we have seen him throw in this fight, but then again, he hasn't needed to throw a lot of body shots. His leg sweeps are working, his doubling up on his front leg are working, and his combinations are working to the head. That's true, he's not missing too much. He, I mean, actually, just a couple of wheel kicks toward the head he's missed, but other than that, he's been hitting his target. Now, certainly, one of the aspects of the international rules in that you don't have to execute at least eight kicks is that every kick thrown is thrown for scoring purposes rather than just to get your kicks in. Exactly. Uh, these fighters, you can see them going out there, they're throwing to make it land, to do some damage. There's no uh, sense in throwing a punch or a kick just to throw it. Well, they're throwing, yes, they're throwing actually anywhere from 20 to 30 kicks, 40 kicks per round. First time in this fight that we have seen Cunningham take a step backwards here midway through round six. This world championship fight scheduled for 11. It's one of the few high kicks I've seen Asuka throw throughout the bout. Cunningham stepping in and wrapped right around his head. You can hear the corner man, they're exhorting this fighter to, to turn it on. Corner man from the uh, uh, Nobuya Asuka. Tough to turn it on when you can't find the switch, and Cunningham has kept the switch hidden pretty well from his opponent tonight. Six in the books. Thus far, I would have to say all six to that man right there. Well, Petey is coming and actually hitting with everything. He's not missing anything. And uh, Shibuya there it does, it just doesn't seem to be hitting at all. Every time he throws, Petey's never there. That's a good point, Benny and Blinky. When you watch uh, Nabuya here in round six, nothing's connected. Yeah, the, right there, the left leg goes off of the arm of Cunningham. Cunningham just holding him, pushing him away, keeping him at bay. Not only is uh, Nabuya behind on the score through six rounds, but you have to wonder at what point does the frustration level begin to work in. 
I have to think that Nabuya is uh, extremely frustrated, and it sounds like his corner is also frustrated. They're there trying to exhort him, motivate him, get him to get into this fight. It came a long way for him to dethrone the champion, and so far the, the champion has just continued to, to stage uh, an attack that Nabuya has no answer to. Right there, you see the sidekick to the head. I think within the fourth round and on, he thought maybe that uh, Petey there will slow down, but it hasn't, it hasn't slowed down yet. Now they're going to stop the clock here a moment as Cunningham accidentally kicked Naboya in the groin area, which, of course, is against the rule. Naboya says he's all right. They touch gloves, and they're going to go back to war here in round seven. You notice that the champion, Peter Sugar for Cunningham, bowed to his opponent. And in the traditional karate world, a bow is as well as saying, excuse me, or I'm sorry. So therefore, it was acknowledged by the challenger, and then right back to the attack. Well, there's definitely a lot of respect between the fighters. Oh, what a good left foot by Cunningham! He's definitely had, he's definitely had the reach on the legs, but he uses it so well to keep his opponents off and comes in with that right leg. Looked like a left leg to the chin to me. Nabuya got up surprised that the referee was counting him, but hopefully we'll get a replay on this later in the round. Looked like a left roundhouse kick to the head to put uh, the challenger on the mat. You hear the uh, the corner of Asuka saying, lo, 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 and many times, myself fighting in Japan, when you hear that, you know that what they're asking their fighter to do is to go ahead and start kicking low, kicking low to the legs. I think what they want to do is slow Cunningham down by wearing his legs out. Cunningham throwing that defensive sidekick to the body. It seems like no matter where Asuka moves, Phil, he's either uh, getting hit with a counter or he's getting hit with an offensive attack. Now, Blinky, if he's going to slow Cunningham down in round eight, he better bring a tire iron into the ring with him. <laughs> now, Boya, down here in round seven. Everybody, listen carefully. The Thus far, unofficially, Cunningham winning all seven rounds of this 11-round championship fight. And I suppose, Benny, the thing that has absolutely stunned me is the lack of movement, the lack of really any offense on the part of Naboya. Well, you know, I'm surprised. But when I fought Naboya, he was more aggressive. He was really into it. And for some reason, uh, he doesn't seem to be moving too much at all. I think he's really just confused or just don't know how to fight uh, the champion here, Petey. Did he have that same look in his eyes that night in Tokyo as he does tonight? Uh, actually, you know, the, the look he had naturally uh, was a look of pain, but in here, he has the look of confusion. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Here we had Cunningham going to the, the legs with the right leg and then doing a counter switch and going with the left leg to the back leg of Asuka, trying to work down his legs now. He was picking kicks right off the arms, off the gloves, and coming back with his jab. Through seven rounds, Azuka really has yet to land any kind of a kick that has caused Cunningham any type of a problem. It seems like Cunningham has just uh, been having like a radar screen. Anything Asuka does throw, even though it's been limited, still hasn't had much success. I'm amazed at the tremendous punishment that he's taking. You know, it just, uh, he, you know, he just absorbs. He just keeps an absorb. You know, to take that type of punishment, most would be on, on the canvas by now. You know, from the leg shots and to the body shots and the head shots. You know, it's, it's incredible the kind of type of punishment he takes. Couldn't have going to the body with the last two kicks. One was a front kick to the plexus, and the other was a round kick to the outside of the body. Naboya comes into this fight tonight with a record of 20 victories and two losses. One of those two losses came at the hands of the man here at ringside with uh, Blinky and I, Benny the Jet Okides. And Benny, right now, what is Ruben telling uh, Pete Cunningham? Actually, I think he would be advising him that he would have to put the pressure on him and take him out uh, as far as, because he's taken a lot of punishment, but I think He's in to zero in on his jaw and go low and come in with the hands and uh, try to put him out already. And I suppose certainly the other element that comes into play is 
That man right there throwing all those legs and punches is in total control of this fight, but even though you're in total control, you don't want to fall victim to that one shot an opponent might get in on you. Well, you know, it's not how hard you hit, it's how right you hit, and it doesn't take a lot when you hit it right on the button. It just takes, just hitting right, uh, your legs buckle. Cunningham, 40 and 0, 20 by knockout, five-time world champion. He is the reigning world super lightweight champion. He is in the white, and he is in total control. <laughs> Quite frankly, Blinky Rodriguez, I expected much, much more from Azuka Nabuya tonight. Well, I have to agree with you, Phil. I also expected more from the Japanese champion. He came in, everybody and in, in speaking in the locker room felt that this was going to be a much, much more rugged fight for the champion to retain his title. But nevertheless, he's looked slow and sluggish. Who knows? He might have overprepared himself. It's hard to say. But then you can't take nothing away from the champion. The champion's been on his game, and he's just completely dissected uh, Asuka. Well, you know, uh, the fight is not over until it's over. You know, because I've seen many, uh, uh, not many, but I've seen some champions right at the last get upset. I mean, you know, just, it's, uh, it's really, the, the fight's not over until the last round. So, hopefully, uh, if he doesn't, Asuka doesn't change his game, Kasek Tata, then I, uh, I think, uh, obviously, he's lost, you know, he's lost this fight. There's a leg sweep on the part of Cunningham, and for the second time in this fight, Asuka goes down. I think what we've seen there was exactly what uh, Benny the Jet was speaking about earlier. Uh, Nobuya picked up the front leg and Cunningham went right for the back leg, which he tried again right there in that uh, series of, of kicks. Good body shot, follows it with a good cross right hand. I, there you go, I think he's, now he's being much more aggressive. He knows that's it, it's, it's time to put him out. What I think it is, Benny, is that his corner man, Ruben Yukita, sent him out there. He said, look, champ, go out there and get this guy out of here. He doesn't have nothing. You should be able to go out there and stop him. A nice spinning back kick. Now that spinning back kick punctuated unquestionably the kick of this fight, and that occurred right here in round nine. The leg sweep and down goes the Japanese champion. We'll be back in a moment. Round 10 of the super lightweight world championship fight. Pete Cunningham is the world champion. The man in the red is trying to take it back to Japan. He is Asuka Nobuya. He has been in trouble, Blinky. Yes, he has. You know what impresses me about the champion, Peter Cunningham, as he throws that spinning hook kick is that the tenacity that he's shown in this fight, he's coming out, although he's won probably every round, he hasn't eased up on the pressure. He's come out to take care of business. He hasn't lost his concentration, and he's staying right on top of his game. A lot of times a fight like this will lull a fighter to sleep, and that's where, as Ben and Jet was speaking, the opponent might just come back and catch him with a bomb. Now you look at the face, the chest, the thighs, and the shins of Asuka Nabuya, and everything is as red as his shorts. Oh, well, he's definitely taking a lot of punishment. And uh, Petey there, he seems to be just into tunnel vision, just zero in on him and uh, almost can even hear his heartbeat. By Nobuya, you get the feeling here in round 10 that he's just trying to get to the barn. I, th <laughs> I think, you know, I think that uh, at this point, I think he's just trying to survive. Boy, what a tremendous performance tonight by Peter Cunningham. I really feel that, that Peter Cunningham is the class of, of, of uh, the sport of kickboxing at this time. There are several other champions that are also well accomplished, but Cunningham comes out with tremendous condition. I think, as you can see there, he just missed with a high roundhouse kick to the head with the back leg. But the condition that it takes to be able to burn for this many rounds on a professional level. And he trains very hard, and he's a real good representation of the sport. Good point, Blakey. Cunningham actually began preparing for this world title bout about six weeks ago, and that's that's pretty much right on as to what it takes, didn't you, Benny? Well, you know, the thing is, uh, most champions never get out of shape, but usually what happens is it takes about six weeks to get at their peak at the fight. 
And there's a result of that conditioning right there, the ability to deliver those kind of high sweeping kicks into the 10th round of a world championship fight. 11th and final round. Only chance for Navoya here is to take Cunningham out. As I, as I said, uh, here, I think he's just trying to just survive the round. Oh, man. That was a tremendous spinning back. And I'm going to be surprised, Phil, if Vasuki can get up from that. Oh, my God. He took that flush on the chin. I hope there's a replay on that if this fight continues. I think he definitely has to be stunned from that back kick to the face. Why the champion's not putting more pressure on, I don't know. Asuka here just takes tremendous punishment, and, and he just, you know, he just keeps on taking it. That's probably the only thing that is not surprising tonight in the effort by uh, Azuka, and that he took all the punishment Benny you dished out last April. Yes, that he did. You know, it's just uh, the body can only take so much, but as you can see, it's, it's tremendous. He has to be in fantastic condition, you know, to take this type of punishment. Well, back in the seventh round, Cunningham dropped Azuka with a left leg to the chest in round nine. It was a leg sweep and a spinning leg kick that dropped him again in round nine. And then here in round 11, that spinning back kick. Flush to the chin of Azuka. I, I, there's no question that, that Azuka has won the respect of the champion because any time a champion go out there and, and land that type of a kick, especially that late in the fight, and the challenger still be on his feet, you have to earn the respect of the champion. Good body shots by Cunningham now going downstairs on Asuka Nabuya. But Asuka, Another seems, right yeah, the see, Asuka seems to be more aggressive. You know, now it's the last round, but he knows he has to do something. Cunningham winding it down just the way it all began. And that's it. That's the final bell. Ladies and gentlemen, all three judges agree we have a unanimous decision. The winner and still the super lightweight champion of the world, Peter Sugarfoot Cunningham. Benny Oquidez, in my book, that man right there pitched a shutout tonight. He was perfect. Oh, without a doubt, he definitely Suka took every round. Nobuya. Tonight, Pete Cunningham successfully defends his world championship. And Benny, I suppose the thing that impresses me most is now not only can Americans go up against the Oriental fighters, they can defeat them at their own game. Well, as you can see, uh, the champion here had not only the speed, but the superior techniques that completely confused the Japanese. And, and that's what happened uh, in this fight. Uh, he was just completely confused. Well, Blinky Rodriguez is in the center of the ring with the world champion. Blinky? Peter, the fight. What do you think about your opponent? He was a game man tonight. My opponent was super game. He was the, he has to be among the toughest uh, guys that I've faced in a ring. Uh, where he lost in skill, he had in just sheer toughness uh, to take punishment. Okay, what's going on here, Peter? Okay, I noticed that uh, he was checking quite a, quite a few of my right leg kicks. So then I faked the right leg kick. He picked up his left leg and I went underneath. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's something that we work on at the Jet Center. Okay, here we go with the highlight with the back kick that you caught him to the face with. I thought, well, I'd go for broke, off the jab, and off a fake, and throw that back kick as hard as I could, trying to take him out of there. We tried it. This capacity crowd saw quite a night of kickboxing. Next time, we'll show you the Women's North American Championship as Pixie Elmore takes on Kathy Law. Now for Benny Uquidez and Blinky Rodriguez. Take a tip from these muscle pain sufferers. It's two-time world champion Lawrence Vieira going for his third championship belt in his third separate weight class as he comes up in weight to take on the ghost warrior Juan Torres for the vacant WKA world lightweight title. Hi, everybody. I'm Phil Stone, along with former world champion Blinky Rodriguez. And tonight, we'll also see a special preview of martial arts sensation Jeff Speakman, who makes his motion picture debut, Blinky, and Paramount Pictures the perfect weapon. And boy, what a motion picture that should be. Well, I understand that Jeff Speakman is the real deal. He was trained by Ed Parker. I'm looking forward to seeing it myself, Phil. Blinky, you talk about Ed Parker. We'll also be presenting a very special tribute to the man that many consider the father of American karate, 
Ed Parker, who died December 15th unexpectedly of a heart attack at Honolulu International Airport. A tribute to Ed Parker, a sneak preview of Paramount Pictures' upcoming release, The Perfect Weapon, and World Championship Kickboxing. All of that and more coming up next from the Celebrity Theater right here in Anaheim.